What's going on world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, we'll be taking a look at this week's forecast, seeing what the stars have in store for us. As always, shout out to all the Cancer celebrating birthdays this week. Pay attention to this energy as it'll be with you all year. So, as many of you know, we have a new moon coming up this week. And it's not just any new moon. It is a total solar eclipse. And eclipses are always significant for the fact that they, they represent a complete restart. Okay? Uh, it signifies the ending of one cycle and the beginning of another. Just like the new moons do. But what I want you to keep in mind here is that for, let's say, half of this year, basically going back to the last eclipse, we've been in a particular cycle working with uh, specific themes and learning certain lessons. So as of late, even up until the last full moon, we may have experienced a culmination, you know, uh, to a certain point. So as always, it's a good time to go back and just reflect upon where you, what was going on in your life at the, during the last eclipse and where you are now. Okay. And I got to say, this particular eclipse compared to ones from the past, and speaking of reflecting, I just, I, I was reflecting on last summer. Last summer, uh, eclipse season was very, very intense, you know, uh, but this particular, you know, eclipse that's occurring in the sign of cancer, it's, you know, going to be a, a less intense, I'll say that. However... I'm speaking in an in a overall sense of just the energies at play. But keep in mind, if you have any planets within the degree range of where this eclipse is occurring, which is about uh, 9 to 10 degrees Cancer, if you have any energy within Cancer around here um, in, in trine or square sextile, it's going to be felt more intensely for you. OK, but overall, we always want to look at what the the themes of the sign that this is occurring and representing cancer deals with the, the realm of emotions. It deals with home. It deals with security, our roots and our personal conditioning. And, you know, another reason why I said this eclipse may not be as intense or more subtle is because itself isn't aspecting transit wise, it isn't aspecting uh, pretty much any other planet except for Uranus at a very wide orb, you know? Uh, so when we look at that, when we look at the, the sextile uh, towards Uranus, how we can, you know, take advantage of this, is to set goals to come out of our comfort zone. As you know, Uranus represents uh, liberation. It represents embracing what what is different, going against the status quo, your higher genius, okay, uh, being just just standing out rather than standing in, okay. And with Cancer, although these energies are harmonious, change is uncomfortable. So for many of us, depending on uh, where this eclipse is happening, you're going to be forced to come out of your comfort zone. Not necessarily because something negative occurs, but because without leaving your comfort zone, you don't grow, you know? And I've been kind of singing that message all week. Where, where are you? Where are you going if you remain where you've always been? So during this time, we want to, like I said, seek to see how we can come out our, our comfort zone. What are we placing value and security upon? Okay. Um, what is our emotional programming? And this is another part that's going to play into this particular eclipse. If you're emotionally aligned, if you are, you know, been doing the work to tap into yourself, especially with Mercury and, and Mars having been transiting uh, Cancer 
this is going to catch you, this transit is going to catch you motivated, it's going to catch you in alignment. But if you're experienced, you know, lots of restlessness or just discord from within, this is a major, you know, sign to reevaluate the themes of cancer within your life. Okay? So let's give some examples here. Let's say this uh, eclipse is going to occur within your fifth house, right? In terms of coming outside of your comfort zone, the cancer related to the family and, you know, uh, motherhood and, and things like that, and in the fifth house being children, we can say, especially at this particular time, um, you know, say you your your identity or your security has been wrapped up in being a parent and whether it be your your child is you know now going off to college and they're an adult and they're moving away you know that security that you had as you know a, a parent or with your children is changing and in turn it's going to force you to change this can you know a person may identity being in the flux here, like, what do I do next? Well, the fifth house is the house of creativity. Dig in. Dig into your own personal expression, okay? Cultivate you, right? Nurture yourself. Let's say this is occurring within your first house, right? And this works perfectly with the sextile uh, towards Taurus. It's kind of like, in, in one way, it's like, how can, say you've been insecure, right? So like, how can I change my, physical appearance, especially if I have any insecurities regarding, you know, my appearance and things like that. Taurus is telling you to look towards, if this is your 11th house, you know, Taurus in your 11th house, look towards the, uh, your like-minded people, people who share within the same ideals, you know, how do they carry themselves or, you know, what would make you more, more comfortable or less insecure, okay? Once again, stepping out of the comfort zone signaling something new, you know, or just in general as a first house example, just dealing with how you interact with things within your world, possibly responding to it with less emotion than you normally would. And I, I'm, I'm going to get to that as well. So I give, an, I give one more example. Maybe it's your, your 12th house, right? Say this is occurring in your 12th house. There can be a need for you to become more emotionally invested within your, uh, not your career, within your uh, spiritual life, right? Or use your spiritual beliefs or spirituality in some way to help guide your, you know, your career, your public persona as Taurus would, would be within your 10th tenth, your tenth house. So look at those energies, see how you can combine them, how you can seek to break out of that comfort zone, switch things up, become more emotionally in tune and things of that nature, okay? So remember, write, write your goals down. It's imperative to do that. Seek to examine your own internal programming. Pay attention to your triggers, okay? And don't be afraid to walk away from things or people uh, that are just, you know, it, that time has passed, okay? So then what we got going on this week too is Venus finishing up this transit, this transit of Gemini, which I've greatly enjoyed. I hope all of you have too. Uh, I've really felt that, you know, deeper social engagement and uh, even even uh, clashing being that Mars and Mercury were also in Cancer at this time. I saw a lot of, you know, clashing between others, but just overall more, you know, sociality. So now Venus is going into the realm of cancer and this is what's exactly what's going to occur Mars Mars's presence Mars being a malefic stirred up certain things for people while uh, it was in cancer and many of us maybe there were situations where we didn't like how we reacted we could have cussed somebody out you know or got cursed out or whatever and got in our feelings so it was a trigger, right? So Mars was set to, to, to trigger something off within you emotionally or whatever with family and things like that. So when Venus comes here, Venus being overall harmony, right? Uh, it's, it's a sense of peace and, and well-being. And I like Venus in Cancer. 
okay? What we can what we can see here is that especially because when Venus comes in, it's gonna square, it's gonna square Chiron. So what some incident is set to occur that gets you back, you know, emotionally within your feelings. However, this time you have a better understanding of how to approach the situation. Whereas when Mars was there, you may have been uh, more angry or, you know, more combative. This time, you seek to bring a, a better sense of harmony towards, you know, this area of life and the themes revolving around cancer. Okay, so a lot of things are going to happen within the realm of relationships, but the way I see it is that we have the ability to find the perspective based on where where we're coming from you know and then overall this is just a great time to build up that area of life to place more emphasis on you know building a solid foundation okay so this is your relationships you know like i said mars may have caused some discord now venus is here like okay how can we make things better is this even you know worth being better uh, uh worth fixing or whatever okay um if it's your ninth house, this can definitely be a big indicator that we we need to get out here, possibly travel, you know, become more connected with the things that, you know, we believe in or connect with people who inspire us, you know, to be a little bit more faithful and things like that. And it brings me to my next point where I always have to go back to Jupiter in Sagittarius because it's a major transit for the year. It colors it colors the year. So what we have here, what we had before uh, with Gemini season is the the opposition, right? Of bringing a sense of balance between these areas of life. So within this new moon, we have this, you know, uh, Queen Canucks, right? We have it where, you know, this Cancer energy is going to Queen Canucks, uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius. And that goes back to saying like, uh, why, how does my uh conditioning my family you know my comfort zone that i've created for myself how does that hinder me from living my truth okay and what if i i stepped outside of that how how would my life change so remember sagittarius is encouraging you to live your truth cancer is kind of like i'm comfortable with who i am so it's going to be a, a little bit of a clash okay so focus Focus on that and um, overall just adding more with with becoming more grounded within your emotions and stuff like that. Doing so through that of, you know, optimism and belief. Okay, so having enough faith that if I make these desired changes, if I go against what makes me comfortable, that everything is go going to work out. All right, then we got Mercury. We got Mercury here in um leo set to turn retrograde pretty soon and then we got mars we got mars coming through so these energies are going to eventually square uranus which perpetuates the whole theme of what i've been saying about change but with here with, with this here is going to be a need to for some of us to either humble ourselves and our ego Okay, or dig in and have more of that, have more confidence and you know more expression. So keep in mind these energies also are going to try Chiron. So my advice is to tap literally tap into the energies of Leo, right? And if you if you are an overly confident person, maybe you need to just be more mindful of others, right? Meet others where they are, okay. Or on the other on the on the other end, you may need to speak up more. So I'm definitely encouraging, you know, most people to express yourself. This say what you need to say before this uh, Mercury goes retrograde. Okay, or just pay attention to what transpires, and then as it goes retrograde, it'll be something to ponder and get better at. But Mars's presence here is definitely going to serve to motivate. Okay. Um, it's compatible with what I was just talking about, Jupiter in Sagittarius. So 
we're going to be more fired up, especially if you've been taking that cancer transit to chill out and, you know, refocus yourself. You should have an abundance of energy and just, you know, understanding of how to direct your will. It's going to be a really, really good transit. But like I said, um, we could find ourselves restless. We could find ourselves challenged, challenged, you know, uh, by that square to your bonus. But overall, change is what's needed. So focus on this new cycle. Pay attention to what, you know, the universe is showing you. Like I said, you to really see how this uh, eclipse is going to affect you. Keep in mind the house that you cancer rules in your chart, as well as any planets you have that are going to make it, uh, that are going to be making aspects towards that new moon. All right. So y'all, this is my interpretation of this week's new moon. Feel free to let me know what's going on in your world. If you need a reading, holla at me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do so. Until next time, peace.